Good evening. Hey, uh, welcome to the Eric J. The Great Podcast. How you doing? Doing well yourself, sir? I'm doing all right. Hey, what's that noise? Uh, I'm in my apartment downstairs in the basement. Downstairs. Okay. They got, yeah, I, I ain't got, ain't no choice but to deal with that noise. Oh. All right. Uh, I can go outside real quick. You might have some chirping from the crickets, but. That's about it. Well, nah, that should that should be all right. Okay. All right, man. All right, ready with you up, boss man. Yeah, man. So, um, so um, got three topics today. So uh, we could first start off and to uh, jump into the uh, cryptocurrency. So uh, first off, what's your opinion on cryptocurrency and what uh, cryptocurrencies are you currently invested in and ones that you look to jump into in the future? Well, I believe that one, that crypto is the future and that the future is already here when it comes to being in crypto. That's number one, solely number one. And if you don't get into it now, you know, it's going to be a lot of spots that you should have got in and you're going to miss it. Cryptos that I'm into right now, I like to stay in my Ripple, my Litecoin, my Doji, and I, I love my my um, Ethereum. Love my Ethereum. But some, well, some of the ones that I, I've been really paying attention to is Shiba. Um, in the, for the last few weeks, so roughly the last month, it's been going up at a steady pace, and I've been liking that. When it oh. comes to uh, doing those cryptos, and India right now is number one with buying cryptos, so I've been looking at um, more of the um, places overseas that's been uh, looking at building up on crypto when it comes to India. And so those are some spots to look and dive into because India is really starting to become a superpower when it comes to buying cryptos. Yeah, I'm currently in Shiba. I've been in Shiba for about six months now. And then uh, I I got some Doge and I got some, uh, what else do I, what's the other one? Uh, um, I can't think of the other one right now, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Cryptocurrency is uh, really the way of the future. A lot of people are starting to accept it as payment. So they like buying cars and all type of stuff. So well, who would think that, uh, who would think like five or six years ago, you know, digital currency would be the, would be one of the ways of life. I mean, it's not the complete way of life yet, but it is one smaller way of life. You're definitely right. Because they got credit cards already out for Bitcoin and all these other ones as well, too. So we got credit card companies already investing. We got the Federal Reserve Bank talking about specifically creating their own coin, specific coin for the United States. Another one. Uh, there's just so much going on and people don't really realize if you don't you ain't gonna have or be able to have a regular credit card anymore, or a regular debit card. That's gonna be a way of the past. You gotta think. In the last five years, we've put chips in debit cards and credit cards. We oh, already yeah. got we got people already putting credit and debit cards in their hand. So you got to think like we're we're finding ways. To evolve our our currency, not just money, but specifically our currency. Yeah, I think uh, cryptocurrency is one of those things. If you stay ahead of the curve and find the ones that continue to come out, and you get a nice little jump on it over a gradual period of time, you can set some up, you know, for your kids and stuff. So you don't have to go in your own pocket, you know, when they graduate out of high school, you can just hand them some cryptocurrency and they can 
you know, start their adulthood. You know, it'd be like a little investment that you could just watch as they go through school. Man, I I see it like being able to start. <laughs> they're gonna have crypto banks in some countries. It's only crypto, completely crypto. There's no more bank systems. I believe it's it's a place in Germany. I don't quote me on that one. I think it was Germany or Hungary, and they actually took off all ba- all banks closed down. Uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of cryptos, man, is going to really shoot up real high, like a couple hundred to a thousand dollars a coin. So I, said, I, I advise anybody, you know, to get a coin base account, coin base pro account, Robinhood and uh, crypto.com, you know, and also get you a. a get you a wallet, you know, to secure your coins, too. Just don't leave them on the app, you know, just in case, you know, the app goes down or something like that and you can still access them. Oh, yeah. You're definitely right on that because if you don't have a way to access it and those uh, go down, you're going to be in really tough shape. Really tough shape. Yeah, so as far as uh investing, what are you what is your uh opinion on investing? What do you think is uh the best thing people can invest their money in? The best way you can best way you can uh really get a bang for your buck is real estate. Real estate has stood the test of time. People are buying houses with crypto too on top of that FYI everyone. But um Real estate, real estate, real estate. Buying land and buying property. Because if something does happen in the market that crypto, um, anything electronic goes down, let's be honest, everything is going electronic. If everything electronic is down, if you don't have any land, any property, any investments that you can sit on to be able to have something tangible, you have, <laughs> you're not going to make it. So uh, real estate is really important to have a some land as much as I, I, I believe in crypto and I believe in, you know, nothing is going to happen. There's nothing's going to be able to break down and destroy what we have in infra- infrastructure when it comes to currency, when it comes to crypto or debit cards or credit cards. If we I like to think of the best case scenario and the worst case scenario, we get a solar flare. All technology is gone. You ain't got no property, no nothing, no bit way to communicate, and you ain't got nowhere where to uh, place your head at. What's the point? You need to have a place to lay your head at all times. And by doing that, having a piece of ownership is going to effectively get you into the place of where you need to be at. To be able to protect your family, to be able to do everything you need to do. So real estate. Again, Technology can mess up. We saw that with Instagram. Instagram was down for an entire day. And now it, it had to pop up. But a lot of businesses lost a lot of money because they couldn't get into their Instagram. Now, imagine if the world actually went through a crisis like that with all technology. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you can never go wrong with real estate, you know, because you always got to have somewhere to stay. Also, you know, anything is dealing with real estate because, you know, you got to have land to have restaurants, stores, mm-hmm. all this stuff. So uh, one thing one thing I was thinking about as far as good investments, you know, if you have a solid business plan, you know, I know a lot of people is making a, making good money off airbnbs and uh food trucks yes because you know the food trucks you know you can get the food trucks you know for anywhere from 20 some of them i don't see some for a hundred thousand but you can get some for twenty thousand and you know you know get you a good team cook you know somebody you could trust around your money just in case you don't want to be there every day 
And, uh, you know, just basically, you know, anything going to take some groundwork when you start in something that's not, that doesn't have a household name. So I know a lot of people, you know, making a lot of money off those taco trucks and selling soul food off food trucks, or breakfast, you know. So that's one of the things because you, it ain't like a buying a franchise where you just stuck in that one area unless you buy another franchise in another city. That food truck, you can ride that all over the country. You know, you could just drive it to Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, it don't matter. You know, you just post up, sell plates. So is that something you ever thought about doing yourself? Yeah, I got a family member that has one. I was thinking about doing it because I know people that do it and they they making a killing. I know uh, one of my friends make close to 10000 a month off his food truck. Sheesh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, so it's a good investment, man, if you do the groundwork to get it, get the uh, people to know about it as far as promotion-wise. And then once you get people in, you know, once you get a good amount of initial people in, everything else is word to mouth because you got good food, people are going to talk about it. Yeah, that is true. You sure, right? Because if you ain't got no good food, they're going to talk about it again, that way too. <laughs> you ain't got it or you got it hey they gonna talk about you good or bad but anything is a good investment if you know you know you don't necessarily have to get into something just because something somebody else is into it or a lot of other people that you might look up to like celebrities and stuff have success in certain areas so you might think, oh, when I get some money, I'm going to just do what they did. You always, you can never go wrong by following your passion because you do something everybody else going to do and you don't really have love for it, even though you got the money to do it, you're not going to really put your 100% into it. But if it's something you love doing, like if you're into nails and you want a nail shop, you know, you go. going to you not only you gonna put the money into it, you're gonna do all the extra groundwork and everything to get it off the ground just because that's something you love doing. Like you wanna you want that to succeed because you love nails, you know what I'm saying? So you you can't never go wrong with what you love doing. You just have to have a solid game plan, good people around you, and you always have to have money for promotion. A lot of people start stuff and don't have a budget allocated to a promotion and getting people to know about it. So you'll start a business and you only have your friends that know about it, but the strangers make you rich. So you got to, you have to get other people that you don't know because you don't want just people that you know, because that's only going to go so far. You know, if you get in touch with people in the city so you can pay for a billboard, you know, pay to get on a billboard around the city, uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, you know, all that stuff works. Heck yeah, but I like what you said about said earlier about having a pretty much a foundation. And that's why it's important, especially in the black community, we like to uh, do things and not be fully planned out and then expect uh us to be able to try to get loans or different things like that for our businesses. We have to have a business plan. That is the first place you need to start at is having a business plan, having, being able to pull out that budget, being able to see your levels, your analytics, being able to see um, who's your, who's your age bracket that you're going to be going, your, your target audience, being able to break these areas down is going to be able to improve your chances of being successful. And if you want to be successful, you got to have that business plan. When I first started my first company, it was called bold and soft LLC. It was for uh, beauty products. I was selling us uh, a body scrub and a uh, beard oil, which I've, uh, I'm about to start back up doing, but I realized I didn't have a business business plan. I just, okay, I got all the product ready did everything I was supposed to do, but I didn't have a budget. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't know who my target audience was. I mean, of course, you know, as men for, you know, their beard, but I didn't have like, okay, what age group am I targeting? 
Am I age? Am I going again? If I'm going, am I am I grabbing hipsters? Am I grabbing um, people that are more mature? Or am I get my age? Is it going to be 24 to 34, 35, or am I going for older? Or am I going for younger? All those demographics that you need to have and do your research on that. And the area that you live in is really, really important. That's why that that business plan comes in handy. It gives you a foundation. It also makes you get clarity when you're not in in the right mindset to keep going. It's like your <laughs> for it's like your daily devotion when you look at your business plan, <laughs> you know, and doing that research. But I'm a person that loves doing research, so I will research the heck out of something, and you know, and I just got better over time with doing that. So. I really thought I thought that was really important that you brought up you to have a have a real foundation. Yeah, you have to have a marketing budget and anything you're doing. Just that even even not to get religious, but even in the church. You know, if you start a church, you know, you're not doing it as, you can like a business like you you know what I'm saying, but church you know you you want people to come in your church so you have to have a marketing budget you know for people to know about your church so you know you, you have to have money on promotion and you're not gonna succeed if you don't have a marketing budget you know your plan is gonna fall straight through the ground even the bible say right make a vision i'm sorry write the vision and make it plain yeah so we can transition into YouTube. So uh, as far as your uh, YouTube channel, uh, what what did you have on your YouTube channel? Uh, my my YouTube channel? I do love my YouTube channel. <laughs> I do love it. It's a blessing. Uh, it's more on holistic health. And holistic health is a breakdown of four different areas. Finances, emotion, financial health, emotional health, physical health, and spiritual health. If you are lacking in any of these areas in life, you are not happy. You, I, I guarantee if anybody can find me, somebody that does not have these four areas together and they're genuinely happy, I'll cash at them some money. That's how serious I am in this area. And it'll be more than just lunch money. But I'm serious. What I mean, if you're lacking in the, one of these four areas, you are not truly happy. Because if you're not physically and emotionally happy, right there, those two alone, you you feel like crap. Your emotions are out of sync. If you're not financially happy, meaning your finances ain't tight together, <coughs> you and, it's, and you're struggling financially. There's going to be something else that's going to be lacking in that area because finances, that's stress, that's anxiety. That means your your emotions are right there. They're messed up. That that deals that messes with your physical health and spiritually. You're out of whack. You're out of sync. That's why all four of those areas are tied into holistic health. So, what made you um, do a channel on a holistic health like what? Um... Do you have a strong passion for it for one? And did you encounter something as a child or something struck you along your life up to now that made you was made you get into that? So yes, I do have a passion in that. Um there's a short answer. And the reason of the passion is, you know, I got Sorry to say this, this is one of these rough conversations I'm about to have is um, I got molested and raped when I was younger. Okay. And uh, people are like, okay, so why, why does that deal with holistic health? And I'm about to break it down. Why I, for four between, I would say between four to six years from four years old to almost about 11 years old, I was molested and raped my emotions and my everything that was around that I dealt with, um, it played a factor for those years, young years. It played a factor for years in my life, and it felt I couldn't get nothing right financially. I was struggling emotionally, 
you know, I was just, you know, having sex, you know, because I was out of sync with my emotions, you know, and then spiritually, I was just off, like straight off, you know, went to church. I was a church boy and everything like that, you know, and I was still struggling in this area. And physically, I just felt, you don't mind if I curse or nothing like that, do you? No. Okay. I just felt like straight shit, man, like straight up every single day. I didn't love myself. And this is for 20 something years. I'm 32 now. You got to think from from age four to 20 something years after that fact, I didn't love myself. I had to rebuild myself for years when I start really focusing on that. That's why I'm really dedicated on holistic health, you know, talking about us men um, being over sexualized, especially us black men. Um, dealing with, you know, people that had to deal with surviving those type of traumas and anxieties and PTSD issues because the PTSD comes after the trauma that you went through. Um, so sometimes it gets mixed up. You got PTSD. No, you had a trauma, but PTSD is after the trauma. Um, so being able to have to have a, a platform to be able to talk about these issues Especially, um, I'm going to start really getting more from the physical portion of um, of holistic health into the actual spiritual and emotional. Because I was talking about, you know, how to be able to help yourself, you know, physically more. So uh, that's where my passion and drive comes from holistic health. Because... All those traumas and everything I've dealt with growing up, there's a lot of, uh, there's a collective of men that had to deal with those type of issues. And it's not easy dealing with trauma, especially as a man, when you're, especially, let me just put it like this, especially a black man in America. Doesn't matter if you buy straight, LGBTQ, whatever, A through Z, as uh, Dave Chappelle said, <laughs> you know, but, um, there's so much that we go through on a daily basis and it's not easy. And I want to be able to be able to have a space for people that feel safe, either talking about that or knowing that somebody is here to help you. So eventually I'm going to go ahead and get something situated with that as well for as a business side of the house on that. But yeah, that's where my passion comes from with finances, holistic health, everything. Yeah, li- yeah, holistic health, man. Um, one thing I do like about holistic health, you know, usually when you talk about anything with health, it's like the first thing that comes to somebody's mind is physical. Like, all right, I got to put something in my body, you know, to, to stop me from getting this when I get older or something like that. But one thing about holistic health that stands out you know, and I'm just now getting hip to it like a month ago, but uh, one thing that stands out is the mental aspect of it, especially you know, down upon, you know, go to mental health or, you know, have any type of mental issues, you know, because you looked upon as weak. You know, even when I was in the military, it was frowned upon. So, you know, when when you have something, a resource like that, you know, if you're going through life struggles, they can kind of isolate that incident and, and help you, you know, stimulate your mental side. Anything that helps stimulate your mental is good because your mental – can lead to more physical things being around with you. So it's always good to have the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so how often do you drop videos on your YouTube channel? I'm actually getting back into how it was. So it's going to be weekly. Um, we last, my last video, my last video that was over a minute was um, shopping. How to be at a budget ball on a budget because <laughs> if we're talking finances, the side of the house, 
you need to be able to have money left over. You can't really focus on the other three if your finances ain't straight. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, what's the uh, first off, uh, tell the uh, people what's the name of your YouTube channel and um, also uh, also uh, tell, you know, tell us what feature things you have coming on your YouTube channel as well. Yes. Um, Zeke Speaks Z-E-K-E Speaks S-P-E-A-K-S Spelt speaks is exactly how it's spelled, just in case you couldn't understand it. Um, we're going to be talking more on the emotional and the spiritual side of holistical health because a lot of people don't really pay attention to that side. As you, and you know, it, it does help out to be able to have a to understand the entirety of holistic health, and because a lot of people don't work really touch on the entirety of it they just talk about the physical or you know the emotional side but nobody talks about the every other thing that does comes with holistic health so we're going to be really just diving in and tightening up on those uh, topics again zeke speaks and then my instagram is crypto zeke where we talk about crypto and we really dive deep in that too crypto zeke Crypto, excuse me, crypto underscore Zeke, Z E K E. Yeah. Two spots. Feel free to DM me. I do free mentorship. Um, I do have a trading team. Uh, that trading team, we do have, we do pay dues. I'm going to let you guys know that up, up front. We do pay dues if you want to be on the trading team and, and we actually invest together. And I believe. Or was it? it was one more thing ah the next thing i'm uh picking up is photography i'm actually <laughs> i know everybody calls me a jack of all trades but i'm picking up photography because it's more of a uh, emotional thing for me so it's uh it's like it's not even doing business it's something i, I like just love doing so look on that also that's uh that link is in my bio for my on crypto zeke so check that out. I'm starting to put pictures up now. So even as we speak. Yeah, man, I think this uh just like uh cryptocurrency, um it's a holistic health, man. One of those things uh that I could see, you know, being a future, you know, especially with athletes, because it's gonna take that one athlete to say something about it as far as like recovery and making their body feel faster or somebody with influence, you know, that's going to make it take off. But, you know, it's just onesies and twosies right now, but eventually it's going to grow, you know, and I think that it's going to get big as far as how the digital currency trend is going right now. And I think that uh, as far as this holistic health thing, man, it's almost, I could compare it to uh cannabis you know it's people using cannabis to you know with certain health issues and and recovery and things like that so uh um i support it all the way and i think that uh anything outside the ordinary or just taking pills and prescriptions that your daughter gives uh not your doctor gives you you know i think is good anyway because i feel like anything that's close to anything that's naturally you know, made from, from herbs and things like that is always better for you than just taking a pill. You feel right about that. That's one thing that I, I like about holistic health <laughs> the most is because I do not like taking medicine um, if it's not natural. In most cases, uh, I do. Unless you, they have to put me under, I don't take medicine. I try my best not to take medicine. If there is no other choice to take medicine, I will. Okay, I will. Don't get me wrong. I will take medicine as as needed. Like, I had a double flip over. I had to take medicine. They had to give me shots because my back was so jacked up. I get that. 
But if it's just a, oh, I need to take a prescription for depression, anxiety, PTSD, uh, as a veteran, you know, we get stuff, we, we're blessed, to, we don't have to pay for that stuff, but um, not just the pain, is those medicines really mess you up in a lot of areas. Why I used to be, when I was dep- on depression medicine a long time ago, I was a grouch. For about four months. That's crazy. Rouchy for four months. I couldn't take it anymore. Every time I get tired, I get grouchy. 30 minutes after taking my medicine, I turn into a different, complete different person. And your spouse has to deal with that. You know, the person you're dealing with has to deal with that attitude too. You know, you, you got to figure out what works. And, you know, holistic health is when I really got into it. Um, that's what really changed me from the inside out. It really did change me from the inside out. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think that um, as far as, as far as holistic health, man, I, th- I like the varieties of it. You know, you got, um, uh, it ain't just like a traditional thing where you know it gets born like it's a lot of different things that relates to that so i think that it's gonna be real big and people they're gonna create something for people to invest in to make money off this stuff because this is some good stuff that they got going on you just reminded me of something i'm gonna let y'all know what's really about to pop off all right, this this is this, you, you heard it here first, okay? You heard it here first. The next biggest thing, trend holistically, that's about to happen, and it's, it's going to be bigger than cannabis, it's going to even possibly even surpass crypto. And <laughs> I know I'm, 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 I'm doing a suspense for y'all right now, it's going to be dealing with. <laughs> mushrooms the magic mushrooms I'm letting y'all know this now like they're talking about once they get this in once they really get this into Congress and it's in Congress to be it's been it's starting to get voted on within the next two years it's going to explode you have to think you got cannabis and psychedelic drugs natural psychedelics being able to be grown. Now imagine the combination of both of those right there. And it's illegal right now. They're talking about psychedelics. Psychedelics is used in almost every very everything that we have has some and something similar and naturally has a psychedelic in it. Your medicine. There's so much medicine with psychedelics you that you would not even believe that has psychedelics in it. And it's a huge list. That is the next big thing that's going to drop in the next five to ten years. Mark my words. You heard it here first. That's crazy, man. People people are out here. <laughs> I'm passing. telling you now. I'm telling you. In the next five to ten years, maybe even two, that's going to drop. Yeah, man, that's and yeah, I, who would think that mushrooms? <laughs> I, I I I hate mushrooms, but the I mean, psychedelic ones though, the ones that make you have those trips, they are going to drop. And when it drops, you got to think anybody that's doing anything illegal that be selling these bad boys. The equip the equipment alone, I was looking at it because somebody was telling me about it. They were like, you know, hey, you know, these you really have to be like a scientist. Like literally. It's crazy. But I'm telling you, man, it's about to this is gonna be the next big drop. And if you, anybody missed this, I'm sorry to say it. You missed the biggest evolutionary <laughs> time in your life. It will I'm telling you right now, y'all better catch this when it drops. If you don't, it's going to explode so quick. It's going to explode way quicker than Bitcoin ever did. 
Yeah, yeah. Anything dealing with health can surpass anything, you know, with just involves flipping money or just having an asset. So, yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep my eye on that, man, because I like to catch I like to catch anything ahead of the wave, so I can be sitting there pounding my chest two years later, you know. People, but, uh, and if the crazy thing is, there's doctors and everything. They have uh, tell they have shows talking about psychedelics, and it's starting to get big that they're talking about psychedelics in public. It used to be taboo to talk about psychedelics in public, in any type of way, even from doctors. Yeah, so. man. Yeah, man. I think we had some we had some good topics today, man. One thing I want to touch on before we get off of here, uh-huh. you know, on the first two topics, uh, one thing I uh, forgot to say: um, when it comes to investing and in, in the stock market in general, you know, don't always listen to your friends. You know that that for one that's not doing it or have no knowledge of it but if you you know you know have interest in these things but you just don't have the knowledge or have people around you that with the knowledge to teach you you know it's it's books and all type of classes and stuff you could take on this stuff you know we got smartphones and we don't even use all the capabilities on it you know, it's all type of stuff. You can download audio books, anything, you know, because you can't never have enough knowledge. So don't, uh, you you can uh, school yourself on these things and, you know, go out your way to invest in some of these things and look up on, you know, some, put, surround yourself around people, you know, that knows this type of stuff once you get, uh, caught up on what's going on and what's the basics and the fundamentals of it. So you able to, you know, engage in different things and you're not just wasting, wasting your money on materialistic stuff, you know, all the time, you know, you can invest in something to you can pass down or, you know, set up your next generation up for that, yes, that, than what you got set up when you was coming up. So I think a lot of people uh, miss out, on the stock market. I mean, I know anything in life is a gamble or have a risk. And you're saying you're going to make money as soon as you jump into it or you're going to have days where you take L's. But, you know, uh, you know, people take risks every day on dumb stuff. You know, you know, people take risks being in a game that on a uh, fight on a block that they don't even own. So why not, you know, take a risk on something that's could be better you and your family situation, you know? So I always uh, say, you know, you always want to uh, put yourself around people, you know, that has the same goals that you have and, uh, and you can people that you can learn from that you can aspire from. Cause if you put yourself around people and you're the smartest person in the room, you're not going to go for it. You sure right on that. You hit that right on the on the head. But yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast, man. Uh, you know we had to reschedule it a couple of times, and uh, I had a, a lot of family stuff coming up uh, this past weekend, so I had got busy. But uh, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, like I tell all my guests, man. Uh, Anytime you want to have something, you know, it don't necessarily have to be on specific topics. It can be anything on everyday life, you know. You know, on my previous episodes, I did episodes on fake friends, police brutality, child support, things like that. So if you got something, you know, you feel real passionate about it, you want to talk about it on a platform, you know, you always feel free to hit me up and we can strike up a, a podcast, you know, I can have – uh, four other people on here besides myself on here, you know, we can have good dialogue and, you know, pass the mic and talk like that, you know. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, before you get off here, man, uh, just uh, any last words you want to say to and uh, also uh, promote anything that you got going on and uh, just give out all your social medias and YouTube links that you want people to tap in with. All right, cool. Final words of closing. Get into crude oil, U.S. crude oil. It is right now. It is over eighty dollars. It's been going fluctuating between seventy-five to eighty. I say pay back, not seventy-five. Seventy-seven to eighty-three dollars. Been fluctuating in between there. By next year, January, February is looking to be at one hundred dollars per barrel. So uh, this is the time to get in now before it rises and you're going to you're going to miss a big huge wave and it's just going to just keep going up. We all know this is going to keep going up, especially it's going to die down a little bit. It's going it's going to fluctuate down a little bit in the winter months. Um but it's going to jump up and skyrocket when it, when it hits, you know, when springtime start to come slowly come in. So even by April it may hit by it may be that late as April in the spring. Um, my social medias are crypto Zeke crypto underscore Zeke Z E K E. My YouTube is Zeke Z E K E speaks S P E A K S. Um, I'm really uh driving traffic to my YouTube page because even though I am on my Instagram page you're going to miss a lot of info about holistic health finances trade. We even, I do have a couple of trade videos on there to teach you how to trade. So if you want to be on the, uh, you want to be on the trade team, I do not charge to teach and mentor, but I do charge for those that want to trade with me. That is a monthly fee of $200 to be on the trade team. Again, $200 on the, to be on the trade team. If you hear it on here and you let me know, and you say, Mr. Eric the Great sent off. You uh, reached out to me, and you say, Eric the Great, um, I will let you guys come in for a hundred dollars. I will admit, I'll let you guys come in for a hundred dollars because I believe in um, blessing those that bless you. Um, and that is a monthly fee. I love you guys, and just be great, everybody. Yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, hopefully we can do this again, you know, about some more, um, any, any topics in the future. And uh, this podcast will be out tonight. And uh, and that's it, man. Uh, everybody tune in. I got more content coming out uh, soon. You know, uh, more artist interviews, more real serious topics. You know, just stay tuned. Uh Look up my podcast on Spotify, Eric J. The Great Podcast. Got plenty of episodes up that fit a lot of different areas. Mostly it's three topics per episode. So you know, everybody tune in and stay tuned. And uh, follow my Instagram, SwagFlu205, for more information. And uh, thank you, uh, Isaac, for coming on. Yes, sir. It was a blessing. Thank you. And we out.